Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with the FIA Nations round number two at Dragon Trail Gardens in the N300 class of car. So this was a one make race pretty much. I think everyone was in the Ferrari F50 in the EU top split server. You can see this was my this was the last race of the day and it was my first race however because um, we couldn't get on till late because obviously I've got the kids to get sorted for bed and the missus was on a late night. And we had an issue before this race, literally about an hour and a half. When I went to do a little bit of warm-up before I went live on the stream, our pedals, our T the TGT pedals actually broke on us just before we went live. So we had to quickly swap the pedals over, put the T3PA Pro pedals on, which have a slightly different travel range in the braking accelerator. It did take me a bit of time to get used to it. You can see that on the live stream. We were driving pretty bad to start with. But by the time this race came, started to get a little bit used to it. Um, wasn't 100% comfortable. And this was obviously being my first race. Didn't really hook up the qualifying lap. It was There was a lot more potential in it. Um, normally, I do a lot better in my second attempt. You can see qualifying down in P16. But again, we didn't really put much practice in for any of the FIA round two. We just decided to do it, have some fun. Because I really do enjoy driving the, M the M300s in the F50 when it's like this. It is good fun class. Um, the, the F50 is really drivable and it's really enjoyable to drive. And this track was actually quite a, a nice track um, with this car because the chicane wasn't too bad. Um, the track limits weren't that hard to um, adhere to. Um, going over the um, the curbs wasn't too aggressive with this car as well because it was a little bit raised from the ground. So it was actually quite fun and I was looking forward to driving this and just having some fun see if we can make up a couple of positions i didn't expect much from this race quite a high split lobby again i think it was over 3,000 points um you can see even bfr devil right in front of us obviously this car does have an advantage if you use a shifter although they have adjusted that with the patch that's just come out um the shifter now doesn't get an advantage so hopefully these races in the future should be a bit more even obviously i don't use the shifter because of the bar on the play seat um hopefully in the future i can get that sorted and so i in on other games we'll be able to use the shifter but um as it stands at the moment, I, I, it's just too annoying and um, can't really find the place to put it. But you can see, starting from P16, a little bit um, lost a bit of time at the start of the race where the um, the starting you don't tend to always get right behind the car in front. But with the strength of the slipstream on weak, which these M300 races tend to run, you can pick up the slipstream from over a second away. So as long as you're within 1.3, 1.4 seconds, I think normally you pick up the slipstream at a reasonable rate. You actually pick it up quite strong around eight temps, nine temps. And then I think within three temps, it tends to weaken a little bit and not be as strong. But you can see going into the braking zone, braking very deep into that corner, nearly missed the braking. Just about managed to make it, ran a little bit wide onto the curb there, but reasonably safe not too bad and staying in that slipstream now we've got to try and get as close as we can to bfr because we need to not the risk of these races is losing the slipstream you know if you lose that train it is so hard to get it back because you've got the fastest drivers at the front dragging along all the other drivers through the um weak slipstream which is obviously it's a little bit stronger than the real slipstream it's more powerful so it pulls the cars quite aggressively from um, a little bit further back like i said before but going through these right hand corners you can see driving okay so far just trying to keep it consistent like this was my first race obviously the last race of the day just wanted to keep it consistent stay out of trouble and basically try not to lose too much driver racing because i did I, I was kind of a little bit worried that we would end up finishing right at the back but you can see managing to hold pace with the drivers in front at the moment you can see how competitive this race is we've got trr manuel rodri just up ahead of us you can see him in p13 there so you know th these lobbies are very competitive some of the fastest drivers not managing to hit the best qualifying i mean we've got benito Raul behind us a very fast driver as well so not too i wasn't too worried about qualifying p16 it was just a case of let's just keep it consistent a few cars might make a few errors pick up a penalty here and there and that might gift us a couple of positions because it is very hard to overtake in these cars and um, even though the slipstream is on weak what you tend to find is because p ones normally the fastest driver on the track he drags everyone else along in the slipstream and everyone's just picking up a slipstream because it, it you pick it up from further back i think one thing they could do is maybe um reduce the distance that you pick the slipstream up from to try and make the overtaking a little bit more um possible because if you're within 1.3 seconds of a car in front you tend to pick up the slipstream as you can see now i'm back on bfr devils rear of his car and picking up the slipstream now and just trying to hold off the cars behind at the same point and 
just trying to keep it consistent. You see, this is a really tricky section now as we go through this right hand corner. Really important to get it into that curb and then swing it to the right. You see, not really swinging it that well there. Had to back off the throttle and I was losing a bit of time on that corner. This is where the practice would have come into play a bit. Um, I obviously didn't put too much practice into these races. I had um, issues with the pedals and obviously the night before I didn't stream and do a practice um, lobby like I would have liked. We did one, I think we did two race practices here and then that was it. We didn't really go into the time trial too much. I did about half an hour, um, which isn't too much. But like I say, this season, I just want to have some fun with these races. I don't want to take it too serious. I know it's the official season, but the way the structure is on GT Sport now in terms of the way they're doing the points, it benefits people that can put hours and hours and hours into um, practice and then at the moment, I just can't do that. So we're just here to have some fun. And I am enjoying it, even though it, it, obviously the season is hard to be competitive. But I'm really enjoying it, especially this race. I actually had fun, um, even though we're starting from the back of the grid. I enjoyed this combination. It was great fun. It's a shame that it, it was a one-make race. This is one issue I have with this race is that maybe they need to have a little look at the BOP within a lot of the end classes. Because... It's pretty much every race turns out to be either a one or a two car race. There's ne never really any variety in it, which is a shame. It'd be nice if there was some variety in these races. Maybe like four or five cars that we could pick. As you can see there, BFR Devil. I think at that point there he had um, ran wide and possibly got a penalty and decided to let me go there. Probably wanted to pick up my slipstream, but what that meant was we were a little bit far back now from P14. You can see the gaps close to losing that slipstream this was we we're, we're verging on losing it here at this point and i was trying my hardest to stay in with it you can see because it's around 1.3 1.4 seconds i think that you you lose the slipstream or something like that you can see we're just about in it at the moment and trying to push really hard you can see much more aggressive through that corner that time took that a bit better than what we did before and now just trying to see if we can hang on to p14 um in this race but you can see Obviously, that incident by BFR Devils put us up one position. So we're now up to P15. We've gained a position. We've got TRR Manuel Rodri just ahead of P14 there. And pushing on to see if he can make up some places in this race. But you can see now how close we are to losing that slipstream to P14, which is so important. What you tend to find in these races is that you tend to have little groups that um, separate. Because if you lose a slipstream, they it's really hard to get back into the, the car slipstream that are ahead. Because... The back of the train is getting a massive like double draft. This is something that we always search for in qualifying. If you would have watched the qualifying on the live stream, it was actually quite funny watching everyone searching for the the double slipstream. It's it's so beneficial. The triple slipstream is really strong, and that's what we worked out in a previous race. I think it was quite a few seasons back. Um, in, I think it was at the Maggiore track. Um, it, was, it was really a benefit. We the first race we did, we qualified like P16. Then the second race we qualified, I think in the top five or six positions because I think it was actually we might have even qualified P3 or 4 or something like that because the benefit of getting two or three cars ahead of you was massive in terms of the strength of the slipstream you get because they're going that much faster each car's going faster and then you're picking up the slipstream from a faster car which gives you massive benefits but you can see I'm trying my best to stay very close to this car in front it's really hard because he's picking up a really strong slipstream I'm just about picking it up at this point it's just hanging on in there at the moment you can see um, rail behind me and um, Benite rail pushing also to try and get close that corner I was having really uh, a lot of trouble trying to get the rotation on the car and probably wasn't being aggressive enough through that corner you can see how much I was losing and um, the driver behind me put me under a lot of pressure there because I just wasn't really hooking that corner up and I was losing probably about three four attempts every lap just on this this little section of corners because I wasn't really fully up to speed on the track which was partly my own fault for not practicing but like I say we don't have the time to be putting hours and hours in of practice on this so we're just here to have fun and that's why I, I even though this race was fairly static again these road car races do tend to be very static because of the slipstream it, it doesn't matter what track you go to you can go to the I think it was the Porsche race that we ran last time um, with a similar type of setup I think it was at Interlagos and it was very similar there. There was just no or little overtaking throughout the whole race. It just seems to be a trend with these races that it's very, very hard to get any overtaking done. You can see it up ahead. It's just a long line of cars, no real overtaking going on. And at this stage, we are so close to losing that slipstream to P14. And I really, there was a couple of times that I really wasn't hooking up some of these corners. It was a shame, obviously, not warming up properly again. But annoying thing for me was I would have loved to have had another race at this because I think with another attempt 
with this as a warm-up race we could have got a better result but we weren't able to do that with the situation we were in because this was the final nations race of the day as we go into the breaking now you can see manuel rodri trying to get past p12 you can just see it up ahead he's putting him under a lot of pressure they look like going side by side now but again did he actually make that move i think he might have actually got a move done there no he had to sit back behind the car and he had to follow back into the train and try and work his way through the corner as we now go through the fast left hand corner and this is a corner which can catch people out also if you run a little bit wide there get onto the gravel it can cause some real issues but again you can see through that section of track i tend to, to lose some time to them cars up ahead although we're now i think at this point now we've lost that slipstream to the drivers up ahead and this is where the issue comes now because when you've lost the slipstream, this is going to put me under a lot more pressure. Obviously, without picking up the slipstream, it's going to mean that the drivers behind are going to be able to attack me much more. As you can see, different lines we were taking from the driver behind to myself through there. I was trying to make sure I got a strong exit from that corner to ensure that the overtake wasn't possible going into turn one. Although turn one was it was possible to make a move but it was a very dangerous move if the car in front just took a very tight line because they'd have to go around the outside so it was really difficult to make any sort of move through this section but you can see up ahead now we've pretty much lost that slipstream now because we wasn't really close enough after i think we've if bfr devil wouldn't have had that issue then we would have been on the back of the train in front however with the issue that he had it meant there was a bit of a gap that created however it gave us a position so at the end of the day we ended up getting one position out of that um, so we're up to p15 from p16 but will there be opportunities to make other positions up in this race you can see that it seems to be getting a very close up ahead and um, it looks like a few cars are getting quite close together as they go into that left hand you can see they're side by side through there um, two trl drivers very close together and one of them battling with the yellow yellow f50 and this is where it's gonna you know this is the possibility that we might be able to make some positions up if drivers make mistakes in this race you know going side by side through some of these corners with cars like this where the grip isn't maximized it's very easy for cars to make mistakes as we go through the left hand corner you can see up ahead there's carnage up ahead as two drivers are off spinning a trl driver spins and we take advantage of that to taking picking up two extra places and i nearly went off myself because when we went through that corner we went through the ghost i panicked a bit and just didn't know what was gonna happen I wanted to get through it before it unghosted and i missed the braking slightly but just about managed to hold off the driver behind and stay in p13 so we actually lost a bit more time to the train of cars up ahead however we're now up to p13 so if we can hold on to this and defend from the drivers behind which is going to be very hard because we've now we've 100 not got that slipstream from p12 we've just got to see if we can manage to hold on to p13 and to be fair I was going to be quite happy with P13 from starting down in P16. As long as you make up places, I genuinely feel reasonably happy with at the end of the race. But we're going to have to do some serious defending now. For the remaining three laps in this race, you can see we're on lap seven. Just three more laps to go to hold off the drivers behind. Very fast drivers still, you know, it might be the back of the grid, but these top split races, you can pretty much rely that any one of these drivers, if they would have got the qualifying, would have been further up on the grid. We saw that at um, the Nations race last, I think it was on the last one we just done at Catalunya. Our first race as we're going very defensive there. You can see going to the inside, trying to make Rail go around the outside, Benita Rail on the outside. We're going to have to hold a very tight line now, but he's going to get an undercut on us. Is he going to be able to go down the left-hand side? We're now side by side going into this section and like i say this is very dangerous we saw what happened the lap before we're going to try and hang it around the outside there and then give us the inside for this corner as we now go side by side tiny bit of contact there but i had the right to that inside he's got the inside i give him space on that left hand side but now i'm going to have the inside for these two right hand corners which is so important because of the marbles on the left hand side so i'm going to break nice and early just so he can't get the undercut me however the other driver from piece um, 15 i think it is went for a move which has really helped me out there and give me a bit of breathing space he managed to get himself past it i think that um benite might have been able to get on the inside of me there if there was no contact between them two he might have been able to get a, a run on me on the inside then and possibly make a move into this final corner however We've managed to hold on to this position now, but we've got two cars that are clearly looking to make some progress in this race and get themselves a little bit further up the grid. We've got two laps to go as we go over the line for the end of lap seven. Let's just see now. They're closing in again on this straight. You can see that slipstream building and we've 100% all that. You can see how much time we lost with that. Literally half a lap of battle in there 
and we've lost about two, two and a half, well, probably about two seconds of the drivers in front. I think um, if you watch the live stream, you can see the Delta go down massively through the battling we're doing. But like I say, I, I really wanted to defend this position because there wasn't really much chance of me getting ahead of any of the drivers in front of me because obviously with the way that the slipstream works, it would have meant a lot of work to even get even close to the back of the car. So for me, holding onto this P13 is everything now in this race. As you see, the F50 is having a look down the right, but I've got another car that looks like he's going to go for the inside. So I try and hold a position where I can go tight on the apex. We get a little nudge from behind as I try and get on the power a nice and smoothly and try and get that line through that corner to hold off the driver that's directly behind me. But we're still in this P13 position. So this is a great battle. You can see it in that bottom right hand corner, just how close it is at these closing stages and I've got no slipstream obviously to work with they're picking up the slipstream which is obviously on that stronger set and giving them the advantage I'm gonna have to really try and push through these right hand corners this is a section that I've been struggling on in general and are we going to be able to make it through here a little bit better you can see we actually hooked that up quite a bit better this time and that again gives us a little bit of breathing space going into the final corner and then onto the back straight are we going to be able to hold on to this position I know it's only for P13 but every position counts in these FIA races just trying to um, more for pride really than anything I wanted to make sure I'm close to you know making up at least two three positions in this race as we try and take that final corner as fast as possible running a little bit wide there and just about getting it back on track in time just to not lose too much time down the straight but you can see now the slipstream that that Ferrari F50 is picking up behind me he's getting closer and closer into the braking zone so I'm gonna have to take a very tight line so what I do is I hold it very close to the inside curb and then get on the power very aggressively he gives us a little nudge on the corner I think he was gonna try and go around the outside but he misjudged his angle of steering and that's actually kind of helped us out there as we go into the really tricky section here where you've got to try and get the middle of your car directly over the sausage curb and give you the best exit possible we actually did that quite well there and actually give us ourselves again some breathing space as you see that car behind is going to pick up the slipstream as we go down the straight look at the car getting closer and closer i stay to the right side because I felt like he was going to try and go for a move possibly, but I didn't think he was close enough to really get alongside. And this now gives me the ability to get a strong exit from the corner. As we now see that Garassa in front of us has obviously had some sort of penalty or issue as he's lost out um, coming from, I think he was in the top 10 and now has dropped down to P12 just ahead of us. But unfortunately for us, we're not able to get close enough to really get in his slipstream to help ourselves out in terms of defending to these drivers as we go now through these right hand corners it's going to be really important that I hook these up and make sure that they're not able to make a move on me going onto the straight to the final corner you can see going down this right right hand side we've actually took that reasonably well and the car behind us has understeered massively you can see ran really wide and now that's put them side by side and give me the advantage now in terms of this position because I've got a massive gap. I can break nice and steady into this corner as we go into the corner. You can see behind, they try and lunge into each other and I actually panicked a bit during the race when that happened because we saw their cars closing in us. I wasn't sure if they were going to stop in time, but we managed to go over the line and there was a car going off in the mirror. You can just see it there on the replay camera. He went off and it looks like um, Benite managed to get himself back up to P14 and I managed to go over the line in P13. So quite an enjoyable end that race. And again, like like I say, I do enjoy these races in the N300 Classic car. They are enjoyable pretty much every time you do them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that race. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We're going to be back with more videos very soon. We're going to be um, uploading the manufacturer's race hopefully over the weekend. So I hope you enjoy that and we'll be streaming obviously as much as possible. Thanks again for watching everyone.